Hello there and welcome back everybody and uh, this is the big daddy <laughs> the the biggest uh, most important lens I have yet now when I say biggest I mean <laughs> in physical dimensions this is my 12 to 60 millimeter Lumix camera which I got in fairly new condition it was almost brand new and I paid around uh, 160 euros for it. So it was a pretty good deal and it's the most important lens I have, at least for me. I also have this prime lens that I presented previously in my channel, the 12, 25mm f1.7 Lumix that came with my GH4R, which I am using right now for filming. And also I have the 12 to 32 millimeter. This is my second 12 to 32 millimeter. I will put a link to the review here. Uh, naturally, I cannot film with all of them since I only have the one camera. I also have this Lumix GH1, which I also presented on the channel but unfortunately this one does not offer video recording so I can only use one camera and one lens at the time at a time when filming anyway I digress so the Lumix uh, 12 to 60 millimeter um, Panasonic something or other. So this variant is not the Leica, but the lower spec Lumix. It's made out of plastic, but it's mounting point. The um, uh, micro four thirds mount is made out of metal. It's a well-crafted and well-engineered lens. It offers zoom and manual focus as well. Um, the manual focus from what I can gather is the same as the 25 millimeter f1.7 meaning that it uh, it's uh, driven it drives some motors and it well it adjusts the speed of the auto of the manual focus continuously so if you turn it quickly this will jump the manual focus quite a lot it's not uh, it's intuitive but not easy to use at first if you're uh, an old school type photographer you might not like this i have come to um get used to it though if i were to um have my way i would have it uh with a continuous speed but uh, anyway that's that's mostly it about the construction it's plastic on the outside and most importantly, it's sort of somewhat weatherproofed, not splash proof. If you're outside and it's foggy or uh, conditions are similar, uh, humid air conditions, high humidity, this will offer extra protection and will not get damaged by um, high humidity. Or at least that's the that's what a Panasonic are mentioning it. I haven't had issues with it so yeah I mainly used it because I wanted a wide angle lens for my uh, previous and other YouTube uh, endeavor my car related channel which I will link here. Uh, I have filmed with the 12 to 32 Two millimeter lens previously but I felt the need to switch to the 12 to 60. The 12 to 32 was on a budget but the 12 to 60 just marginally more expensive though it offered manual focus and uh, power OIS or power optical image stabilization which really showed in my clips so when I was filming in car and I had uh, I was driving around the other 12 to 32 uh, shook and moved quite a lot this one offered better uh, optical image stabil stabilization especially given that my GH4 camera does not have um, 
optical image stabilization built in so this uh, this feature was very important to me now in terms of uh, in terms of image quality i think that for still photos is just below the 25 millimeter though if you are an amateur photographer you will not really feel the need to upgrade this 12 to 60. What this lacks compared to the 25 millimeter uh, prime lens is uh, depth of field and you know uh, subject separation. This one is an f3.5 uh, to an f5.6. The 25 millimeter is a very impressive f1.7. So without any further ado, let's just attach this. Uh, zoom lens this uh, this uh, 12 to 60 to my g1 camera i hope you can see this here now let's take some comparison pics and draw up some conclusions between all these lens that i have shown you so first thing i i must admit i am a sucker for this look i like this bulky look and i have to mention that this lens, quite interestingly, uh, its lowest retraction point, dimensionally speaking, is not at the lowest, uh, at the widest uh, 12 millimeter angle, but rather at the 18 millimeter mark. So that's just a, a, a quirk of the lens. So let's power this thing on and let's see what we can get. In terms of picture quality, I will again adjust it for the 25mm mark since I have taken photos at the similar um, setting with, with my other cameras. So I will switch to manual focus as I can adjust the focus manually on this one uh, as... Uh, as opposed to the 12 to 32 millimeter lens, which does not offer a manual focus. So let's see here. Let me try to get a pick. That's the setting we want. Okay. And let's check out the picture. Compare it. Well, compare it with the other uh, variants. So quite a clean and crisp image, as you can see for yourself. The other one is, um, is the 25 millimeter variant. Now this could have been a better performer, but I was just not into, as I've said, I'm not into photography all that much. And I could have gotten better results with the 25 millimeter f1.7. And this is the 12 to 32 millimeter picture that I have taken at at 25 millimeter focal distance. So yeah, the 12 to 60 is a better performer all around compared to the 12 to 32. It has better color and because you can have manual focus, it offers, uh, well, more versatility and you can better learn to operate it. Um, what I would recommend this lens for, um, I think it's mainly a great lens for using as a beginner photographer, filmographer. Would I recommend this lens? Cut. So, would I recommend this 12 to 60 Lumix lens? Well, most certainly. Um, on the upside, it has that great uh, wide depth of field, that great wide shot, the 12 millimeter shot, which gets you cinematic looks in the filmography department. Um, it's got a great build construction. It's offer it offers uh, some weatherproofing as well, and all at a great budget. 
from what I've been told yet, I haven't tested that one as yet, the 12 to 60 Lumix G variant is not worth the upgrade compared to this one. Now, uh, granted, I don't use this lens at the wider, uh, at the narrower spectrum, at the zoom spectrum, so I never go, uh, go beyond 30 to 35 millimeter. It does, doesn't does offer that great of a low light performance and when you zoom out it doesn't really have that all that much in terms of lighting capabilities. But it's a great all-rounder and I would recommend you just go ahead and buy a second-hand one. If it's in a good aesthetical condition I think you will not uh, you will not risk all that much if you pay uh, 150 euros or dollars or something like that. I, I went ahead and bought a second hand one though it was a pristine unused in a pristine unused condition. I haven't regretted that choice. All of my clips in the last year have been shot with this lens and I'm fairly pleased with its performance. I would like to upgrade to a 12 to 35 millimeter Lumix G uh, lens, but I just cannot find the justification to spend an additional six to 700 euros for a second hand lens. But this one at 150 euros, yeah, it's a great beginner, uh, it's a great tool for beginner filmographers. If you want the if you want greater pho photography performance, my my recommendation would be the 25mm f1.7. So these two lenses will offer you great versatility and performance for both filmography and photography alike. If you want to go lower on the bottom end of the market you could get the 12 to 32 millimeter which I presented here on the channel as well though if you compare that one to the 12 to 60 really there's not not much justification you should you would be better off with this one but anyway that's market dependent someone sometimes these spring up sometimes the other 12 to 32 pop up at a at a great price um, i just got that one as a bargain backup lens i guess that's been it for me thank you for watching and remember i mostly own buy and collect useless obsolete tech stuff but sometimes I do relevant reviews like these ones. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.